Hi guys, this is Matt here from JEDO. Before I go to the main topic of this video, that is introduction to JNDI, I would like to welcome you to my channel. The main idea of this channel, JEDO, is of course education. I believe it will help both you and me to learn a lot about Java technologies. My long-term goal for this channel is to create and gather here tutorials about Java Enterprise Sometimes it may be a tutorial about some framework, sometimes about uh, some useful library. Everything that can be used while creating applications in J2EE. But before we will go to J2EE itself, uh, I would like to create some series of tutorials about technologies that are part of standard Java, that are essential part of Java Enterprise. Such feature is JNDI. In this video, as its name suggests, I would like to introduce you with the topic of JNDI, its basic concept and some components that JNDI may work with. A good way to start this video and uh, at the same time the whole series of tutorials about JNDI is to present you some end applications of JNDI in context of Java Enterprise. In this case, this usage is very simple. Uh, in most cases, it is used to handle resources. Uh, at the same time, I would like to, to warn you that JNDI is not that simple, and although it is mainly used in J2EE in one, one way, uh, on the whole it is quite complex technology. This is also the reason why I decided to uh, create tutorials about JNDI as a separate series of tutorials. Now, imagine you're developing uh, a huge project and before deploying it to the end user on a production environment it has to go through some process and usually it is represented by, by a few environments uh, development, integration, certification and finally production In each of these environments there are some resources that are specific to this single environment for example database data source uh, some web service that you are querying or some properties resources. And we would like to avoid any excessive logic or boilerplate code to handle those changes. Configuring these resources on application server like Tomcat, JBoss or Jetty is a perfect solution. And here is where comes JNDI. Each of these application servers supports JNDI but in different ways. How it can be configured on each of them I will discuss in the future when I will create some tutorials about J2EE application servers. From our applications point of view, we are simply asking JNDI for, let's say, database data source. And we are querying it by simply its name. And on each of these environments, for example development or, or production, this name is the same, but behind this name stand different data sources. On development environment, it is development data source and on production environment it is production data source. There is also another advantage of configuring it outside our project but on application server. Imagine that your whole project consists of multiple web archive files, WARS, and each of those projects communicates with the same database. Configuring it uh, in the exact same way in, in each of those projects would be evaluation of do not repeat your serve rule. Instead, we do it on application server and in each of those projects we simply access it through JNDI. Besides database connection, other resources that can be configured in J2EE in the exact same way are for example May sessions, JMS factories or enterprise Java Beans references. Now let's move on to two mechanisms that have nothing to do with Java but are essential for understanding JNDI, and those are naming service and directory service. Let's start with the first one. The whole concept is very simple. Naming service allows you to mainly look up but also manage different kinds of objects by supplying its name. In general, it doesn't have to be the object itself, sometimes it may be its reference. Here, by reference, do not think about Java reference. It's rather an information, general information about how to access the object. In the end, 
As a result of a lookup operation, we receive ready to use object. So no matter what is really stored underneath, uh, we will simply call it an object. The main benefit of each naming service is that it gives you a meaningful name that is easily understood by human instead of bare low-level reference. If you feel confused at this point and think, man, I don't get it, don't worry. Here comes the example that you know for sure. DNS service. It is nothing but a naming service. It keeps you out of learning sequences of numbers just to watch a video on YouTube or visit some URL. And here this meaningful name I've talked about is domain name. So now in language of naming services. DNS is the example of a naming service that allows you to look up IP addresses by providing its domain name. At this stage please note that name representing domain has its own convention. And from naming service point of view, this name first of all has dot character as separator between different components and second order of components in this example in DNS is right to left. In general each naming service has its own naming convention. Now it's time for some terminology. In majority definitions and names used in naming service are also used in JNDI. So to start with the association of name with the object we'll call a binding. When we create such association between a name and an object, we simply bind this name to this object. When we remove it, we unbind it. And in some cases we want to change this association to different object, we rebind it. I wanted to put stress on these names because key part of JNDI API are methods that have exact same names. So I think uh, it may help you to understand what hides behind them. Let's go back to the example of the DNS service. The fact that name www.youtube.com is bound to some IP address is just the end result of the lookup operation. What's happening inside presents the following diagram. Do you remember what I've told about naming convention in DNS? I have said it's right to left. And although it may seem a bit odd at first sight, since we read it left to right, it is totally reasonable if we introduce a context. From naming service point of view, www.youtube.com domain maps to something like this. First, the root context named com. In this example, this context has two bindings. Name YouTube is bound to first subcontext and name Google is bound to the second. Within YouTube context, name www is bound to actual IP address. So this is how www.youtube.com domain is finally mapped to its end IP address. In language of a naming service, a context is just a set of bindings. At higher level, we define a naming system. It is a connected set of contexts with the same type. In this case by same type we mean same naming convention. And of course this assumption does make sense. And now just to end a little more theoretical section. A naming service. It is a service that allows you to perform some operations on a naming system. Like lookup, binding, rebinding and some other operations. At this point I would also like to note that this DNS example is just a simplification of how in reality DNS service works. Uh, it isn't that simple. I just wanted to simplify it to emphasize uh, what is a context and show you the hierarchical structure of, uh, of context. I have mentioned that there are two mechanisms crucial for JNDI. And the first is the scribe naming service, while the second is extension of it. It is a directory service. Each directory service is also a naming service, but it is more than that. In directory service, a name is bound to an object, just like in a naming service. 
but also an object is associated with its attributes. Please note that here, as attributes, we mean directories object attributes, not attributes that are internal and part of saved objects. So if a saved object is instance of per class that has two fields, key and value, those fields are not attributes of this object as a directory object. From more theoretical point of view, uh, an attribute is represented by its identifier and a set of values. It is a set of values, it's not a single value. It may have multiple values, for example. Uh, and the example you can see on the following diagram. An object bound to name1 has two attributes. Attribute 1 has two values and attribute 2 has single value. A good real life example of it uh, is a situation when uh, an object, a directory object that is saved in directory service, is a user and it has attribute phone. And as a user may have multiple phone numbers, in directory service this attribute may have multiple values. Directory service also provides one important feature that is strictly related to attributes. Because now objects have something more than only a name, you may look up objects by its attributes. In short, it provides search functionality. With those two enhancements, attributes and searching, you may now see directory service as a phone book. Each phone number is bound to a person, directory object, with some attributes, for example first, last name, address or a company name. In this book you may find all persons, for example with last name starting with a letter A or leaving a specific street. Back to the directory service. In JMDI there are a few attribute filters and logical operations that you can apply while searching. We will discuss them in more details in a few videos. Now that we know what are naming and directory services, we can finally go to explaining what is JNDI. This abbreviation stands for Java Naming and Directory Interface. In other words, this is an API that allows you to perform operations served by name and directory services. This is only an API, it does not specify how lookup operation or bind operation is working. That's what specifies also last letter of JMDI abbreviation, letter I, that stands for an interface. Now you may ask uh, how this lookup operation is performed and who is responsible for performing it. This is declared by a service provider. To communicate and work with specific naming service through JMDI, this naming service must have its service provider. Look at this picture presenting architecture of JNDI. Your application just uses JNDI API to perform operations on a naming service. What's happening inside depends on which service provider is plugged in. To declare one that you want to use, in your application you just need to specify one class that is part of this specific service provider. What is this class and what's its role? We will discuss in the next video. JDK contains by default four service providers that allows you to work with following naming services. It is LDAP protocol, DNS service, RMI service and CORBA. An important feature, I think very important feature of JNDI is that you can create your own service providers for your custom naming services. There are a couple of classes that will help you a little bit in it. Those classes are part of JNDI SPI that stands for Service Provider Interface. You can find there for example object factories. With them you can create an object that you want to return as a result of a lookup operation based on some internal state that is stored in a naming service. And you can also do the opposite. Given an object that needs to be stored you can simply save its state instead of the object itself that can be created with help of state factories. 
The last thing I would like to touch in this introduction is what dependencies you need to use JNDI. And the answer is very simple and positive. You don't need to download any modules or libraries. Everything you need to work with JNDI is included in javax.naming package and its sub-packages. Uh, also, we don't need to add anything to use one of four supported service providers that I mentioned. And that's all for this introduction. Hopefully, now you understand what is JNDI, how it's built, and what it works with. In the next tutorial, you will see examples presenting API for accessing naming services. If you like this tutorial and find it useful, you can express your feedback by upvoting this video. If you want to stay for longer with JEDU, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And finally, if you have any questions or remarks regarding this JNDI's introduction, feel free to ask me in comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.